Hello everyone and welcome to our session today on how to set up and use the change log in Business Central. Joining us today is Valerie Ingersoll from Innovia Consulting and we are excited to have such a fantastic turnout today. Before I pass it over to Valerie, I would like to remind you that the session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library later this week for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. And now I will pass it on to Valerie to kick off our presentation. Thank you, Angie. Um, hi, my name is Valerie Ingersoll. Thanks for joining the webinar today. Um, I will talk about the change log. Um, just a little background information on myself. I'm a senior development consultant at Inovia, um, which I've been with Inovia for about 16 years. Um, I do development and support. Um, I'm, I do a lot with EDI, eShip, financials, AP, AR, um, some manufacturing, different areas of NAV. Um, and my contact information is on this slide if you need to get a hold of me. Um, let's see. So today to show and demonstrate the change log, I'm going to do a demo in Business Central. Um, and a summary of what I'm going to be covering is first I'll show how to turn on the change log. Next, um, I'll show how to set up certain tables that you choose to track changes in Business Central. And then next we'll go ahead and make some changes in those tables, in those areas. And then once we're finished with that, then I'll show how we can review those changes in the change log entries. So we're ready to move on to our demo. So I'll open up Business Central. All right, so, um, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with Business Central, but it, it does have a little bit of a different look if you haven't seen it before, but um, it still has a lot of the same areas that you can go into as the prior versions of NAV. Um, and the easiest way to search for things is probably through this um, lookup button here in the upper right. So I'm gonna click on that and go type in change log. And I'm gonna go into change log setup. So that's where we would start out. And in order for anything to be tracked in the change log, you need to make sure that this the change log is activated. So it needs to be um, turned on like this so that the knob is to the right and it's green. So it's turned on right now, so that's the first step. The second step is to have tables set up because if you don't have any tables that you're tracking, it's also not gonna track, track any changes. So if we click on setup and then tables. All right, this is a list of all the tables that are in Business Central. So these are the ones that you can pick and choose which you want. So you can either scroll through the list, which is a quite long list, or we also have a search. Um, so then in here, you can either type in the table number, which if you know that, which you probably don't, or you can type in all or part of the, uh, the table name. So one table that we'll test with is the customer table. So notice how it's filtered down my list, my list to everything that has customer in the name. We just want the one that's called customer. So I'm gonna click on that. And then as you can see, the last three columns here, those are what we can track. We can log, we can track insertions into the table, modifications to the table, or table deletions. And in each of those fields, you can choose to track some of the fields, or actually first is none. You, Blank is it's not going to track anything. Some fields you can pick and choose which fields you want to track, and all fields you would track all of the fields in the table. So I'm going to choose all fields there. Um, modification. So now if I choose some fields, what you would do there is click on the three dots. Then you'll get a list of all the fields in the table. And then you can choose which ones. Like if we want to do name, if the name changes, it would track it. Um, it's a little slow here. Um, city, maybe the phone number. Uh, 
uh, maybe if the credit limit changes. And as we're making these changes in Business Central, they're saved as we go. There's no save button or anything like that. So I'm going to click on the X to close out of that. And then log deletion will also track all fields. Okay, so then once we have that set up, we'll click on close. So now from this point forward, any change, any any records inserted into the customer table, it should track everything that was inserted. If those few, those three or four fields are changed, it'll track those. Or if a customer is deleted, it'll track that as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to the home screen here and and uh, make some changes to the customer. So I'm going to go into the customers. And I will create a new one. I'm going to choose the template to use, which you may or may not have templates. And then I'm just going to enter in some of the um, basic fields here. You can kind of just see how some you can how you can expand some of these tabs to enter in additional information that may exist. We don't have any ship to on us uh, location. I don't know if we have any locations in the database. We'll choose east. Um, that's probably good enough for now. So then, as you can see, it says saved in the upper right. Like I said before, everything is saved as you're typing. So uh, as it, as was in the older versions of Nav. Um, so I'm gonna go back. All right, so there's our new customer there. So now I want to check the change log to see how that was tracked. So again, I'm going to go into the search button and do a search for change log. And here's our change log entries. So we want to go into that. OK. Um, and if you want to make the page bigger too, you can click on this arrow in the upper right um, to show like a wider view. You can see a few more fields. Um, and you can, um, the easiest way would be to filter this down because there's going to be a lot of information here eventually. So I'm going to click on the filter icon over there. And then there's a pane over here on the left that opens up. So I'll click on filter list by and then filter. And then any of the fields in here we can filter on. So I'm going to start out by just choosing date and time and put in a T for today to filter on anything for today. OK. Um, and it does also track changes that you make to the change log setup by default. So that's these first entries that we see here. And. Um, uh, what I'm also going to filter on is the user ID. Uh, which I'm going to put in my user ID. OK, and the table caption. Of customer. Okay. And then we can see the time was about 106. So that would be about you know when when I created this new customer. So as you can see, it shows the date and time, the user ID of whoever made the change, the table that was changed to so the customer, the primary key value, which in this table would be the customer number. So it was automatically given that 50 number. 
And then if we scroll over to the right, if there's other primary key fields, you know, sometimes there's two or three, I'll show those here. In the customer table, there's only one. Um, and then it shows the fields. They, it shows all the fields in the customer table that had a value inserted into them. And the type of change, notice it's insertion because we inserted a new record into the customer table. And then the old value and new value. Because it's a new one, the old value will be blank. And then the new value is what was inserted. So if we scroll down here, you can see um, the different fields that were populated. Now, some may have happened automatically, like this true value. I don't know if I put anything there. That might just be something that came from the template or something that happens upon insert. Oh, I find this what field that was. Allow line discount. So some of those might, sometimes you'll see fields in here that are populated because of validation of other fields or because it comes from a template or whatever else. It's not because you necessarily clicked on the field yourself. Um, and then that is it. So, so it shows all of that. Now, if we made a change to the customer table, the type of change would be modification, and then the old value and the new value would both be populated. If the type of change was a deletion, the old value would have what it was, and then the new value would be blank. So that's how that would work. Um, and to clear any of these filters, if you want to clear just one of them, you can just close out of that. Click on the X, I mean, by that filter. And if you want to hide, if you want to see more on your screen and not the filters that you're, I mean, you can still have the filter set, but if you click on the X here, it'll make, you know, so you can see a little more on your page. And then to bring that back up, you just go back into the filter button to bring that filters back up on the left. Um, you can also delete entries in the change log, uh, which you may want to do, you know, like maybe you only want to keep records in here for the last couple months or year, or whatever you choose, because it, depending on what all you're tracking, it might start to pile up after a while. So you can either, I think you can actually highlight the records, but then when you go into more options and actions, delete entries, um, it asks, asks for some filters here. So I don't think it's actually looking at the ones you have highlighted. You can like if you want to say everything up into up until like one one of nineteen or like twelve thirty one eighteen, so you're only keeping the stuff for this year, and then any other filters you want to add, you can choose the columns in here, and then you would click on OK, and then it would delete those entries. Um, so another thing to keep in mind with the change log is you want to be careful with what, with what you track. I mean, you obviously don't want to track all tables, all fields, because this table is going to get huge and it could slow down your database. And certain tables could do the same thing. You know, like the sales order, if you process lots and lots of sales orders every day, you don't really want to track everything to the sales line table or you're going to have a ton of information in there. And then it's kind of hard to sort through and everything else. So, so if you, you do want to track like the sales order. I would suggest tracking just certain fields in there. Um, other tables are less less um, heavy or you know not as they don't have as much data like setup tables or even like customer and vendor. I mean you might change information here and there, but you, usually you're not adding and deleting like throughout the day all the time. Um, let me think, like setup tables you may want to track, you know, if anybody makes changes to those. If there's ever anything that like you're questioning in your database, like it seems like somebody changed something, but you don't know how it got changed, who changed it, when it was changed. Those are the type of things that, you know, if, if that ever comes into question, just remember the change log, you know, you can go and set that up to be tracked so that if somebody does happen to change it, you can go back and look and see what happened and then if needed, you can talk to that person or whatever else. So um, I think that's pretty much it that I can think of. Um, so Angie, 
is there any questions that came in by chance or does anybody have any questions no it appears that we don't have any questions for you today at least none have come through as of yet if anybody does have any okay. please feel free to get those in the uh, questions panel and we'll get those answered for you okay super should we wait just a few minutes in case anybody has any questions or sure okay I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can can explain real quick to um, one thing that I did run into is um, when I was doing this in Business Central and I don't know if this is common or not but when I first turned down the change log I activated it and then I went and I set up some tables and then I went and made some changes I went to look at the change log entries and I didn't see my information there. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. Like, why is it not in there? Um, but then talking to a couple people and, and coming back later to test it out, I think you may have to close the database. And it might be how you're accessing it too. I'm doing it through a link. So I don't know if it's hosted or offsite or, or whatever. But I had to go out of the database and back in after I had activated the change log for it to start tracking the changes. So if you ever run into that, I mean, just a side note that you might need to re-log into the database once you turn on the change log um, or maybe like a timing issue or something. I'm not sure. So. I, mean, I guess we'll just wait and see if we don't have any questions. Nope, no questions have come through. Okay, all right. Well, um, my contact information is here, so if anybody does have any questions about this uh, and they want to reach out to me either by email or phone, feel free to um, contact me and I'd be happy to help out. And I hope that you learned some today about the change log, maybe Business Central too. All right. Well, thank you, Valerie, for presenting today and to everyone on today's call. Or if you're watching us on demand, thank you for joining us. And we do have a few more webinars coming soon. Tomorrow, June 26, we have Ross Batorf from Anovia Consulting. And he's going to be presenting on converting Cal objects to AL using Windows PowerShell scripts. And then don't forget to check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. And we also want to mention that we have our new podcast going on. It's called the Anovia Conversation. You can find all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's anovia.com slash podcast. So check out our podcast selection and subscribe so that you can get notified on our new episodes. All right. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone, and happy 4th next week. Thank you, Valerie. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.